such a great face. Yeah. All leaders know is like, wow, my follower just did the coolest thing ever. We we all have that face. We <laughs> have that face. And then if you are also a follow yourself, it, your brain short circuits because you're a wow, my follow just did something so cool. But then your follow brain is like, how do I do that? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and be dancerous. People, you know, you know. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another zany episode of Nerdy West Coast Swing, the podcast with pixels where the anchors are out of this world and the points don't matter. We're here to help train your eyes so you can learn faster and dance better. I'm Cassie Winter. I'm Alicia Marshall. If you're wondering who are we to be analyzing these pros, Cassie and I both have extensive training and experience in both partnered and solo dancing. Cassie has about 23 years and I have about 25. So tonight we're taking a look at actually an all-star first place, Jack and Jill. Um, we're looking at Stan and Larissa. Uh, I've heard recently that it's Larissa. Apologies. Uh... Please <laughs> let us know which is correct because we want to be correct. Because we know it's yes. Larissa Tingle. That is confirmed. But is it yeah. Larissa Frisbee or Larissa Frisbee? I've always heard it as Larissa, so... So have I. But I know that I happened know. to Larissa, so... Someone tell us the <laughs> truth in the comments, please. <laughs> Use phonetic spelling Anyways. everything. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, we're taking a look at that tonight. Link is in the chat. Go ahead and give it a watch. When you're done, we'll get to analyzing. There is uh, something I want to say about it before yeah. we uh, get into it. So... One thing I want you guys all to keep in mind is that both of these dancers are are or have been professionals in other styles. So I think that's super important, especially for the performances that they're putting on. Like they're really connecting with each other. There's a few points where they kind of glance at the audience, which I'll kind of point out when we go through there. But like they are really good at keeping things interesting for the audience and making it feel like you're involved to an extent without just staring down the audience <laughs> and i i appreciate that i really really enjoy this dance so mm -hmm. same and i just want to mm -hmm. highlight like stan in particular does a really amazing job of making sure them as a partnership are presenting to the audience the majority of the time yeah he uses the floor beautifully and the the kind of musicality and phrasing that he does feels really organic and not forced. Like he's yeah. not trying to force a phrasing structure on the partnership. He is malleable in the sense that he's creating structure, but he is instantly open to Larissa's input. Um, yeah. And it feels like we see this when he dances with anyone, like it's always a really balanced partnership. Yeah. And that's in part because he's creating the structure and and the space for a follow to contribute um yeah. and that's just like such a beautiful thing to see uh in a leader yeah agreed um the other thing that i want to mention with this dance is that it is very like there's a flow through most of it and that's something i haven't been seeing a lot of recently mm -hmm. um like when we were looking for dances to talk about this week I was having a hard time because the, so many of the dances were feeling very choppy um, mm -hmm. because there wasn't a continuation of the movement. We were stopping so much to do styling things. Um, and I really appreciate how much they're incorporating styling within, you know, the movement of the dance. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Let me, let me get my thing ready. And the fingers right to the screen share i mean just starting out at this beginning here um they make eye contact initially before they really start doing much else which i think is great um a lot of times we're not necessarily seeing that especially at the all-star level um but like i said these dancers in particular uh, are professionals in other styles i like that they're kind of you know feeling things out initially um and then we get a stylized walk into a dip 
And now I want you guys to pay attention here. Both of them very briefly glance at the audience almost at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about uh, what is making that a really good spot to do so. So she kind of glances first and then he glances. But what makes this a really good spot to engage the audience briefly is that they're in a basically sustained position where they are continuing through something like they have connection already and then they're just going to keep going through so because they have that strong connection they can take their eyes off of each other and kind of not think about what they're doing for you know for a moment and so that's when they can kind of address the audience because they know they're already on the same page And they can just move through something, but still have that connection while they're doing it. Mm -hmm. I want to highlight something super nerdy. Um, Stan's, <laughs> the way he grounds himself onto his right foot coming out of yeah. this. Uh, so that way he has 100% control over this weight transfer here onto his left mm -hmm. foot. Like I see uh, so many leaders bring a follow out of a dip and the follow basically remove like takes control of the leader's weight transfers instead yeah. of the leader countering in such a ways that they're in control of their own weight transfers. He does a really good job of supporting her. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to mention though, that they both do a very good job of making sure that um, neither of them are taking all of the weight at one point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Larissa like, as she's going down, she has that one foot planted underneath her, right? And so she has a good amount of her own weight. And then once she's kind of arcing through, that's when she slides it out. And that will take some of the weight off because she's already going through an arc. Um, if she were just going straight down and did the same thing and slid her foot out, uh, it wouldn't be quite the same. It would be like basically all of the weight going into uh him holding her yeah and what he does have when she slides her foot out uh he doesn't have very long because she is already in the process of getting up over her foot mm -hmm. or both of her feet and they have such like a great connection like through his mm -hmm. right arm like yeah he's he's well around the the corner of her rib cage with his right hand she has both of her hands on uh his arm and shoulder and mm -hmm. just the position he's in is not only lovely aesthetically like yeah. there's this really strong line really functional through his whole body but it's countering her really well and stabilizing himself oh hey telemarks <laughs> it's been like a hot minute since we had our telemark special episode yeah, so i'm gonna been. do my quick two cents so the Go magic ahead. of a telemark comes from the follow um, maintaining uh, their momentum through their rotation. At this point in time, it's really important that the follow doesn't stop rotating, rotating and like 100% depend on the leader. So Larissa is continuing to rotate to her left and driving her left side down the slot, essentially, because that's what is uh, what Stan is connected to. Mm -hmm. And that is what's bringing him past her. It, it's it's her essentially leading him. And it feels very much like if you're leading count five of a whip, um, you're just doing it on the other side of your body and you're in the follows role instead of the leader's role. But it does feel like that same whip kind of feeling at the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what and uh, said if done right the lead turns into a projectile <laughs> this, is, this is true as uh uh i i turned many leaders into projectiles last night it was fun <laughs> <laughs> the, the first i i love dancing with andrew slack it's like one of my favorite things but um he led me in a telemark i don't think he was prepared and uh <laughs> I, I moved him past me rather swiftly and 
<laughs> with power as as one has want to do as a follow and he was so excited at the other end it was like candy and then he kept leaving them um and i kept uh launching him it was great <laughs> i love telemarks they're the best when done right yes yes so what i want to talk about is because stan is turning really close to her and we're getting some kind of bending of the arms and whatnot. Like we, we need to be really careful uh, spacing wise so that we don't a run into our partner or b you know, like step on them, something like that. <laughs> um, but they're both really paying attention. They're both really like honed in on what the other is doing. Um, I would say in this situation, um, sometimes I've seen follows uh, like, address the audience while their partner is mm -hmm. kind of moving around them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not a great idea in my opinion, simply because this is such that like, they're so close and they're both rotating. So you have to have it timed really well. And spacing has to be really like pretty specific. Um, and so taking your eyes off of your partner at this point, and I, I will say like Stan, does not have his eyes immediately on her, but he is looking for her as soon as he can. And she, in the meantime, is keeping her eyes on what he's doing and is just focused on what he's doing until she is then uh, scrolling away. But I just, I just wanted to mention that because I think that like this kind of thing where the lead does a, a thing Mm -hmm. is where I've seen some follows um, addressing the audience, just like looking at the audience. And it it is not impactful mm -hmm. and um, it's not necessary. So I, I just feel like, especially because of, you know, how they're moving through this, it's super important to keep an eye on your partner. So, yeah, that's the kind of pattern where regardless of what role you're in, it's really easy to get overextended um yep, and too far exactly. from your partner and being really close and understanding which side of your body is your access for rotation is part of it mm -hmm. so as stan is stepping forward onto his right foot right here his right side is becoming his axis and then um what i think happens a lot is leaders will plant their like left foot right here and then their left yeah. side will become their axis but if yeah. like Stan were to plant here and then get his body up and over it, he'd be yeah. way too far away from her. Um, She's already reaching. Yeah. But if you see what happens is this shoulder keeps going back to his left towards her, yeah. which is what allows him to kind of do the like, I'm holding a, a serving tray on his left hand thing to get over yeah. her head well. Ooh, ooh, ooh. you have something you want to say <laughs> i do okay so uh crossbow whips oh i know what you're gonna say yep <laughs> <laughs> uh crossbow whips are essentially open whips with like handshake holds either right to right over left to left or left to left over uh right to right whoo the word <laughs> um but the most important thing is to be to lead the follow to step forward on four and they're stepping forward with their right foot. So this is count four right here. And it's really important that the hand that you have attached to the follows right hand is drawing them forward. So if we watch this handhold right here, see how Stan is drawing it down line. And he's doing it not just with his arm, he's doing it with his whole body. And he's rotating his upper body to the back and to the right. So his shoulder is driving this motion. And because essentially for a follow to feel comfortable, the hands need to be separated. Mm -hmm. And the follow's right hand needs to go down line farther than the follow's left hand. So that way they get into this naturally prepped position. Yep. And you can see how she's able to really tether into that. Uh, her right hand stands right hand because he's drawing it forward she can resist it a little bit and really create a lovely prep along the right side of her chest and across her torso to then be mm -hmm. able to rotate really easily 
there anything you want to add to that? Um, yes, actually. Uh, this is one of those patterns that I tend to see follows overstepping on. Mm -hmm. um, and Larissa actually, or Larissa, Larissa, uh, We'll know and she we'll be a... able to confirm it on a future episode. <laughs> she does a really good job of not overstepping herself. Um, she is stepping away a little bit, um, but you don't have to in this particular pattern, like because she's continuing the momentum, she doesn't have to get all the way to a back pitch and then switch back out of it necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, as long as she is uh, not super pitched forward the whole time. And that's mm -hmm. what happens when follows overstep and take really large steps is that they then are just pitched forward the whole time. Um, and it's just, uh, they get ahead of the lead. So, yeah. and it, it tends to look like they're falling. So that's, that's another thing. Like, you get ahead of your lead, so then you don't know what's going on, and you're also kind of just falling because you're never kind of getting back up over yourself enough. I just want you to look at like how she's kind of adjusting the size of her steps she's taking, right? So here she is taking pretty large steps, but as she comes around, that step, step size is changing a little bit. It's not quite as large because she realizes that she's being let into a rotation. And so I would say if you have good pitch already, it's not something that you so much will need to think about. It will just kind of happen. Like you will kind of, your feet will fall where they may. Mm -hmm. And generally that's going to be in a good spot. Yep. And on a future episode, when Alicia and I have more capacity to prep for a super extra nerdy episode, we're going <laughs> to basically do pitch perfect. <laughs> but for West Coast Swing, very excited <laughs> about it. You know, we're going to talk about the curse of perma pitch. Because <laughs> uh, maintaining the exact same pitch throughout your dancing, regardless of what role you're in, is probably hurting more than helping. <laughs> There, that's the teaser for her Pitch Perfect <laughs> episode. Just drop a nuclear bomb in our followers' heads and then move on. Yeah, sure. Subscribe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, can you go back to that uh, movement forward? Yep. Cross the floor. Uh, you know it's a good walk forward when slow motion and backwards. Yeah. That's great too. <laughs> so I just wanted to point out how uh, they're both paying attention to each other while they're going through this. So a lot of times you're going to see when they uh, you get into this open walking towards the audience position, a lot of times you're going to see people looking at the audience. Um but because of the way they're going through it and they want to stay at the same pace, um, you see Stan looking at her and she has her eyes turned down. So she's not necessarily looking at him, but that's more of a paying attention to feel um, and getting a sense of where he's at mm -hmm. thing. And then I don't know. Um, Which is this, important. This is just a mindset that I have as a leader. Um, mm -hmm. that usually the follow has the prettier idea for extended walks. So I default mm -hmm. to them, just a mindset thing. <laughs> um, and I don't know if this that's what where Stan is mindset wise. Yeah. Uh, but what I do see is he's delaying his right foot strike mm -hmm. to like land it a hair after her. So he he's yeah. waiting to gauge what her little words, size <sighs> of step yeah uh what her size of step is and timing is from this first one and so that way he can then match her going forward yeah how is there and also room important. for her hair in those neck rolls <laughs> she has so much hair she has like 
Um, it's because it's just whipping him. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> bam, bam. Anyways, I interrupted you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was just going to say it's important to uh, keep the same uh, thing, same step size, same movement of step uh, mm -hmm. when you're going forward with like that. Yeah. Because it should be a partnery thing. You should be doing it together, usually. Um, and so, you you know, you want to make sure that what you're doing is helping facilitate your partner matching you. Mm -hmm. And so being unpredictable is not that. Right. <laughs> uh, her extension on that, the second dip yeah. is so lovely. Uh, I just want to highlight where he's placing his hand, like he's getting all the way across her back to mm -hmm. her shoulder and getting his fingers into her armpit. And you can see how extended his left, left arm is. And that's part of what's creating all this space for her head and mm -hmm. her hair. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's basically uh, switching hands and then doing the exact same connection just with the other hand. Yeah. Like really in her armpit. So it feels safe for her. And then that sets him up to really support her well. I will say it kind of looks like she drops into it before he leads her into it. Yeah, I would say that. But she does get her arm around his waist. Yeah. So even though if it were just her arm in his hand and she were to drop, <laughs> that would be bad news. Yeah, um, he'd be I able think, to handle it, but yeah, I think the difference in what she's doing because she is kind of dropping into it first before he is, but she's not dropping so that he suddenly has all her weight. She's actually just getting herself into a position, and that's just dropping her a little bit. Mm, gotcha. I see and that. then allowing him to kind of move her and finish. But typically what you see with this is the lead is the one that will initiate that drop back. So I just yeah. wanted to point out because she is kind of initiating it. Um, but it's more so that she's just getting herself from like, uh, if you see what she's doing right beforehand, she gets into a position where she is really upright over both of her feet and her knees are both locked out. Um, so that's not really an ideal position to go into it um, at this angle. Right. that they would be going or that she would assume that they're going into and so that's why she suddenly changes so that she has weight digging into that right foot and allows that left foot to go forward so she is dropping into it first but she's not actually like letting herself drop necessarily gotcha. she's mostly just changing um her positioning and it looks like she is just dropping but it's really because of the shape, because she's upright, and then she's going into more of a leaned position. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, it's great detail. And then Stan does a great job of actually taking her in an arc off her feet, mm -hmm. like traveling far enough to make it work. Yeah. Um, so she is um, not having to sit further. She can just... Yeah. Uh, kind of plank back into the connection because yeah. I can't like luckily nobody tries to do this to me anymore but man <laughs> so many leaders tried to do this to me like 10 12 years ago or from this position they would just squat straight down and I'd be like there's no they, room uh... for this <laughs> <laughs> that's just uncomfortable <laughs> All right. Would you agree that this is only possible because her arm is also around his waist? So she has enough frame for him yeah. to initiate another rotation? Yeah. All right, cool. Because that seems like a safety, important note thing. So leaders don't do this if you only have their armpit. I mean, I've seen it done, but, but, but how? it's... It's really unstable yeah. because there's just the one connection point if you just have a hook. Um, and I mean, technically, you are supposed to also have back connection. Does that happen? Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Yeah. 
But even when you do have that back connection, when you have that hook underneath, um, it will disappear if you are rotating it. Mm-hmm. So it's not like this where she is hugging his waist and she's going from hugging his waist. She's basically just wrapping with both arms and then switching and releasing. Mm-hmm. So it's different. It, there's a lot of connection. Yeah. This is super unstable if you do it from a hook yeah. where the follow is uh, not holding on. Yep. And that leg extension. I'm glad I'm not the only follow whose shoes do this when they point their toes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I think they all do. <laughs> it's more exaggerated for some people uh, yeah. than others, just the way shoes I- fit. Yeah. And I think it depends on um, how strong the point in your foot is. Mm -hmm. Because if you have a very strong arch that um, really folds, there's going to be a lot more space. Yeah. I love how relaxed her arm is through all of those turns. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like you can really see that she's actually just letting him lead her and he's doing a lovely job of pulsing the hand that goes over mm-hmm. the head too so uh it's a little bit faster going this way and a little yeah. bit slower going this way so the end of this is one of those things that i was talking about where like I have seen a lot of moments where we're just like stopping. Um, But I love how she follows through and lets it just kind of, she sinks into it. She uses the hips. She just lets that momentum continue. And I think it's a really nice way to um, hit like the phrase change. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, because not all phrase changes or aggressive moments in the music warrant Mm -hmm. a a complete stop. Yeah. Um, What's interesting is, I don't know if this was your experience, but I feel like about 10 years ago, everyone was saying, never stop, ever. Don't ever stop. Mm. And then over the years, the pros stop a lot. Yep. And now (laughs) everyone's stopping a lot. Yeah. And I'm like, could we have some movement stopping balance, please? Yeah, I agree. Um, Because <laughs> that was very much uh, what I was hearing when I was first kind of getting into the dance is that, yeah. you know, you don't want to stop. And I like, I like stops. It's just sometimes it's too much. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like nutmeg or chili flakes. Like a little bit goes a long way. <laughs> mm hmm. <laughs> Um, and I, I do want to add in, so this particular phrase change, um, the music, there, there is a lot more to it suddenly. Um, so she is addressing that actually by the way that she's flipping the hair. The hair flip is a little bit more aggressive and then she's sinking in. But there's still not a stop there. Um She's just addressing it by like the flick of the head. It's very strong. Yeah, this part right here where she like finishes the movement. It's accelerated just ever so slightly. Yep. Which like, as a follow with long hair, um, it's a great opportunity to make sure your hair is not going to be in your face. (laughs) Yep. And then I want to highlight here, because like you mentioned how they acknowledge the audience in the very first dip out of their starter step, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, this one, both of them are uh, very focused. Well, he's very focused on her and she's really mm-hmm. internal in this moment and being very yeah. sensual. And it's that when you're so in the moment with yourself and your partner, that brings in the audience too yep so making eye contact with the audience is not the only way to bring in the audience yeah um 
I love that he makes sure that she's up over her own foot and just mm-hmm. kind of even stays there a little bit longer as she's even walking on her own before he releases out of that. Yeah, he is making sure that she's under her own power mm-hmm. um, when her hand finally starts disconnecting from his back. Yeah, super smooth transition. Yep, but I think it's always a good idea to make sure that you're bringing a follow-up out of something. Just give it an extra, extra little moment, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Because had she, had he let go, um, she wasn't quite all the way forward with her momentum. She was still coming up out of this arch of the back. And so him pressing into her back as he's moving forward is what's finishing that for her, where she's able to then um, be all moving forward. So we were talking about the momentum and everything, and a lot of her styling thus far has been really flowy, but I like that she changes it up, right? So she has that initial little um, foot movement, and it's uh, more of a sharp movement right there. And then going into this right here, Instead of like really melting or something, she chooses to kind of create like a sharp uh, position, I guess. Um, And then I want to talk about with Stan this moment because he's been leading a lot of dips, uh, which has Mm -hmm. been amazing. And uh, he leads them so well. But uh, this is an example of him not forcing a weight supported move. Yeah. He's creating the structure to support her through the connection. Like they have a really stable connection. And then he's doing a flourish with his uh, right hand. And he's like, okay, you're driving now. I will support Mm -hmm. you if you want to go down. I will let you not go down if you don't want to. And she stays up. But he was totally ready to support her. If, for example, she wanted to even just drop into the splits, he was ready for it. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of like organic structure that I was talking about at the very beginning. And then I like that we go from that kind of sharp moment to something that's really flowy Mm -hmm. and she adds arms to it. And it's just very, um, very much what you're hearing in the music. Yeah. And it's driving across the floor again, which they haven't done Mm -hmm. uh, in a hot second. Yeah. Yeah. The way he balances um, traveling across the floor versus staying more stationary is excellent. Um, Mm -hmm. I think the only thing I would want him to do is start playing more with depth on the floor instead of just length. Um, Not that he needs it, but if he's bored, he wants to do something else that is an option (laughs) (laughs) i want to talk about her split i've seen a lot of follows try to go into splits like this and it's not that um in terms of flexibility they can't do it um there's a way that you should go into it that's very stable and it uh, creates really nice lines. So if you watch her front foot, right, she has it going from kind of straight to turn out. And then she is basically sliding out on that um, foot on the side of her foot. Right, so she's releasing it to the side and her back foot is initially going a little bit, it's kind of somewhere in between being like open to the audience and straight down. But I think initially she has it so that it's just kind of pointed open to the audience and not 
pointing down. The reason it's pointing down is because she's already starting to just switch sides. Um, and this is the best way to go into splits. So this uh, right here is actually what I was going to say. Um, it, when she rotates to the other side, um, and let me say there's nothing wrong with her doing this because of the way that she is having to go through it. It's just, That's how she's going to end up, right? With her um, heel of her left foot, like that heel is directly on the ground um, underneath the foot. So the heel of the shoe. And her whole leg is kind of more pointing upwards. instead of um, rotating to that side. But that's just because of uh, her rotating her hips. That's, that's just how it's gonna happen. Um, and so she has that uh, front leg, the foot is facing you know, straight up and the back leg is straight down. This is what I see a lot of times people trying to go into. This position right here. And you're going to see she has a hard time getting up out of it. She really has to use him to help her get up. And that's why this particular position is not ideal to go into the splits into. But that's what I'm seeing a lot is people just keeping the legs um, not rotated out mm -hmm. from the hips. And not to say that you can't get out of it. You can, but uh, if you watch the the split that she initially goes into, it's super well controlled and she is able to uh, control what she's doing in it. She has a lot of her weight, actually. But you can really see that there's like a, a hanging off of him as she's trying to pull the legs in yeah because they can't just slide back up um, and you can't have any pressure going into that heel otherwise it's just going to slip out and drag on the heel of the foot uh from that front leg mm -hmm. and that's not fun <laughs> <laughs> so uh you, you can do it that way as you can see, it's not as pretty as the first split she goes into. But once again, that's just because of what she's doing. She's just rotating through it. Um, but I'm just talking about in general, if you're going down into the splits and this is how you're doing it, like you can see because of the way that the heel is, it, um, it has an effect on the line of the leg because now that foot is further off the ground. And when you go straight down um, with that back leg, um, like thigh facing straight down, foot facing uh, flat on the floor, the top of the foot, um, you can see there's there tends to be that bend in the knee because yeah. of that stretch that's coming from um, like the hip flexor area. Mm -hmm. That being said, you can see the difference. Like when she's... Uh, really rotated out, you can see she has really straight lines in her legs. And then when she goes to the other side, you can see that it, it's not quite as nice. Yeah. But uh, let me say, very, very cool that she yes. can um, switch through and lovely moment in the dance. It looks great in terms of what she's doing. I just don't like when people initially like go into splits looking like this. So, right. Yeah. Having particularly the, the back leg more turned out like it is yeah. in yep. this position. So this like knee, we can see the top of her knee here, mm -hmm. whereas the knee is on the ground right here. Yep. Um, and then I want to just highlight real quick how attentive uh, Stan is being to where yeah. her center is. So if we go in to this moment, so he's using his eye line to really gauge where her center is. And it's 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 here, right? Mm -hmm. And then as she goes into this lunge, 
it's shifting away from him and he's very much countering her by having his energy back away from her and then as she continues down he's he's having to adjust his left foot a little bit because her center is getting a little bit further away from him so he yeah. just walks his left foot out a little bit and her center is here and then as she finishes going in she kind of arcs down and back to hit towards him a little bit mm -hmm. and basically throughout this whole thing he is choosing his foot placement based on where her center is so he can either counterbalance her or just anchor her and i the look on his face is at how cool the thing that she just did it has like he felt they felt stable and even though she mm -hmm. needed his help to come out of that he was in a position to do that yeah like he's he's really applying a lot of strength from his back um yep. and his legs to pull her up right there <laughs> such a great face yeah. all leaders i was like wow my follow just did the coolest thing ever we we all have that face we all have that face <laughs> And then if you are also a follow yourself, it, your brain short circuits because you're a, wow, my follow just did something so cool. But then your follow brain is like, how do I do that? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and be dancerous. People, you know, you know. <laughs> All right. So uh, Larissa just did something really, really cool, right? Um, so now Stan is taking a turn to do his own thing but it's not hyper showy it's like yep. just subtle and elegant and lovely and appropriate for the music and the partnership um mm -hmm. one of the things that drives me nuts is when leaders try to almost like i know I'm they're not trying to, to mock yeah but that's what it ends up coming across as like mocking what the follow just did by doing their own thing, like yeah. trying to copy it in, in a yeah. really like awkward way. Um, I just, it's one of my pet peeves. <laughs> yeah. Obviously that's like a personal preference thing, but yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you on that. Yeah. Uh, and then te technique wise, I just want to highlight um, how well Stan is managing the spacing by placing his left hand very particularly. So mm -hmm. as he's doing this rotation, like it's very natural. If you're turning back to the right for uh, your left arm to go with you, but he's rotating the arm from the shoulder so he can kind of hammer lock behind him. And that way it's not traveling too far down the slot relative to her footwork. So she still feels comfortable following it. Because as a leader, if you were to take your left hand with you through that rotation and drive it down the slot, that would be accelerating the follow down the slot. Um, and then if you mm -hmm. were to suddenly try to turn them afterwards, they'd be very confused. So uh, <laughs> they'd figure it out, but uh, there would be confusion. Yeah. So. And then the little flourish of his free leg as he's doing that rotation. Absolutely lovely. Yeah. It's really nice. And uh, the way he finishes it, he's actually using his leg and his hip weight to counterbalance uh, her coaster step. Mm -hmm. So even though he's stepping across the slot right here, uh, his pitch is that way, countering her. Yeah. Um. Can you go back to that? I want to talk about his uh, free leg just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so what I really appreciate about this leg styling that he does is that it's controlled from like hip to toe. So it, it's, he's very intentionally flexing, um, the foot it's not a lot necessarily like it doesn't have to be a lot you don't have to have a really aggressive point to the foot for it to be under control um it just has to be somewhat uh flexed or you know trying to somewhat point it 
uh, for it to be under control. And I very much appreciate that he's doing that, but it doesn't look, you know, this, this could look a little ballet like because of um, it, it is getting into a ballet position. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it doesn't look like that. It just looks really clean and controlled. And I appreciate that he does not have a dead fish of a foot. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I really like how simple <laughs> that is. Because mm-hmm. they've been doing like fairly complex weight supported moves mm-hmm. and extended patterns lots of rotations yep and i appreciate that she finishes it with the hair and the arm mm-hmm. <laughs> i want to highlight he is once again uh pulsing the hand uh around her head so it's a little bit faster that way and a little bit slower this way mm-hmm Ooh. And then um, for this face loop, yeah. he's being very deliberate to lift the handhold straight up first before bringing it towards her. Yep. And, and that's what allows her to be in on it. Yeah. All right. Getting a frame because I know you're going to want to talk about the one foot probably. <laughs> 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 this is a gorgeous one foot. It it really is. Um, so uh, yeah, I do want to talk about it. Um, and what I want to talk about is I'm letting how. Okay, so through. yeah, <laughs> I've 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 harped on it before, where um, people will try and keep moving through turns that have a uh, weird hitch in them when they probably shouldn't. Um, So she has this really lovely one foot going on, right? And she's up at one level, super balanced, like this is done perfectly. And then she decides to take it down and she drops the foot from the knee and uh, brings it down so that she has an extra foot to catch herself if something goes wrong which i don't it's hard to tell exactly what happened but there's a catch that happens right when she gets kind of to the bottom of this squat yeah i think they're just slowly coming towards us in the camera um so if you watch though when she takes her uh, left foot from the knee and places it down. She's actually not putting any weight on it. It's actually just glued to that other foot initially. Mm -hmm. And her ankle. And she's still just spinning. Yeah, she's still just spinning on that one foot. Um, It's just grazing the floor, really. Mm -hmm. But then when we get down to kind of the the bottom of it here. Like I said, it's really hard to tell exactly what happened, but I think somehow she got a little off balance. Mm-hmm. Um, it's and a lot so, of turns. She, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so she gets a little off balance, and you can see she kind of starts reaching out with that foot that had no weight on it. but she still keeps rotating on that same right foot that's planted directly underneath her. She's just now kind of doing um, step turns instead of just rotating on that one foot. So she's changing it just a little bit. And that's just to kind of catch herself and get herself back balanced really. But then she kind of um, does like a mixture of just rotating on the one foot with the one glued next to it again, and then kind of releasing it and doing kind of like a push spin. 
Um, but what she is doing is just what she needs to do to keep that momentum the same in the rotation. And this, in my opinion, is kind of the exception to that, you know, if you start get have if something goes wrong in a turn, just kind of stop because she really is just kind of stopping doing and like powering through that same rotation on the one foot. She's changing it a little bit to make it work. Mm -hmm. But really, like if you watch it at speed, um, you don't you don't really notice it unless you're really looking at it. Yeah. Because there's so much spinning and she is spinning pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But she also adds in a head and that really makes you look up at the hair and yep. not at what's going down at the feet. <laughs> yep. So here, I want to place this, uh, this section in context of the entire dance. So on the time mm -hmm. frame, there's the beginning. Here's the end. This is the beginning of this one foot sequence, and this is where they're exiting right now. Yeah. And um, so a this is this is this is a long time to be spinning. She's a superhero. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but also this is basically the 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 denouement of of their spotlight. So mm -hmm. and is one of the reasons why um they're choosing to extend this for as long as it is because this is the yep. the pinnacle yep. of this is what they have escalated to um in their mm -hmm. dance um yeah. and putting emphasis on it making it longer so contextually that's where we're at um mm -hmm. and like like alicia said let's just go through that i'm gonna hold forward so we can see the whole yeah. thing in context again at a consistent speed two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13 holy guacamole okay <laughs> that's a lot of turns no wonder i was feeling faint after watching this <laughs> earlier um so uh without spending like an hour on it i just want to highlight what's going on up top uh with the mm -hmm. connection so first of all this is a, a non-standard uh handhold uh well yeah. hand to hand because it's her left hand not her right hand yeah. uh because usually when i follow spinning on their right foot it's their right hand that's attached um and the main thing that that means is the initial arc around the follows head is uh more distance to cover and it's wider so i want you to pay attention to how big of an orbit around her right foot he is making to tether her left side correctly. There's plenty of space for her hand to be out in front of her this whole time. He's not pushing the hand hold towards her forehead until it starts really um, accelerating through here and going across her. Um, it's really common, so uh, bird's eye view, it's really common that instead of going around uh, the arc of the follows frame, leaders kind of cut the corner and then start doing a circle. And, it, and it's this that forces the follow to essentially break their frame. And then it's really yeah. hard to reconnect afterwards. Um, and it also uh, is because it's further in than the outside of the actual circle. It has a tendency that if a follow doesn't know how to, compensate it can push them off their center um mm -hmm. so stan is doing an amazing job of making that orbit nice and huge like i'll back up even further he's really tethering her left side before moving into the accelerated pulsed turns um and then i think what might be contributing to the minor disconnect is so uh larissa is doing the kind of standard hook all of the fingers and just hold mm -hmm. it there hand hold um yeah. uh and i think what's happening is one or both of them is having a hard time maintaining that as she yeah. uh moves towards the ground yeah. and that's what's contributing to um the center moving because 
if the handhold is orbiting perfectly around the follow center, it won't knock them over. But if that orbit moves through space at all, yeah, it'll take the follow off their center. Yeah. And uh, without talking to them, we don't know, uh, like, not that it's anybody's fault, but like, you're uh, right. <laughs> it was like, who's what happened? What happened? We, we, we don't know. Um, because they both managed it really well. Yeah. yeah. And again, 13. But yeah, 13. I agree with what you were saying. 13. I think that that's what was causing it, but yeah, it's, it's still kind of hard to tell. Um, yeah. And, um, it might be, okay, this is just a theory and we would have to confirm this with Larissa because I think maybe she's just letting the handhold get just a little too far across her center. Yeah. Which makes it hard to maintain the tether. Because it, it's looking like right here is that choke yeah. point and she just can't maintain the tether anymore because it's too far across her center. Yeah. Um, anyways, we're just being like super nitpicky. Yeah. This is beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not even nitpicky because like things like this happen. It's more just talking about like what caused it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And really, like at speed, it it's hard to notice that something really changed. Mm -hmm. And then it's just finishing off the dance simply and cleanly like you don't yep. have to keep going that um that pinnacle that you've escalated to uh it depends on how the dj is choosing to end the song and fade out the song sometimes yeah. you're you're ending on a phrase change and you can end in like a frozen uh, uh yeah. weight supported move for example um but for the music that they had there was just a little bit of a fade out that they just kept just kept it simple and clean. You don't have to keep accelerating mm -hmm. until the very end if the music isn't calling for it. Yeah. All right. That was a really satisfying episode. Are there yeah. any questions uh, from the peanut gallery about anything we talked about <laughs> tonight? All right. Looks like no. So thank you all so much for joining us. Um, our next episode is to be determined uh, for topic. So just yeah. stay apprised of the Facebook page. Um, yep. And we'll catch you all again next time. Yep. Bye. Oh, I'm tangling Mine's up done. my cords. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> that almost ended very badly. There would have been like <laughs> fancy gravity induced camera work and everything. <laughs> so that would not have been good. Because I went dancing last night and I have. Postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. I've been extra like lightheaded today. Like I feel faint right now, just sitting here with my feet up, um, <laughs> and watching Larissa, Larissa, spin and spin and spin and spin. I <laughs> it was like inducing pre syncope. I swear. Um, but anyways, that's that's my Ooh. funny anecdote. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>